pull would never come back out. Although I can't find those anymore. If I had sprained my ankle, that would have been terrible. It took so long to get that out. Okay, let's call the meeting to order. Please, Mr. Drenzek. Mrs. Barnes. Here. Mrs. Rogers. Here. Mr. Roach. Here. Mrs. Barney. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Ms. Durig. Here. Solicitor Nicholas. Here. Mr. Brett. Here. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve the May 21st, 2024 minutes? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Barnes. Aye. Mrs. Rogers. Aye. Mr. Roach. Aye. Mrs. Barney. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda, I have a, a pleasure of uh, making a motion to approve a proclamation to recognizing Donald G V. Genuso for his service as board member with the Cecil Township Municipal Authority. Do I hear a motion? I'll I'll make that motion. Oh, I hear the motion. I'm sorry, I made the motion. <laughs> no, I hear I'll the second. second it. All right, thank you. Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Barnes. Aye. Mrs. Rogers. Aye. Mr. Roach. Aye. Mrs. Barney. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All right, let's see if this works. Can everybody hear me? Wow, this is the biggest audience we've had for a long time. <laughs> I'm not going to do any yeah. jokes or entertain, yeah. but I did write something. <laughs> so this has been very long in coming, but um, we wanted to um, recognize you, Don, for your service. It's, it's really my, my honor and my pleasure to do that to you today for your outstanding service and contribution to the Cecil Township Municipal Authority. Uh, Don, you've overseen the growth of uh, the development of the story infrastructure in Cecil Township, ensure the quality and reliability of the services for the residents and businesses here. Uh, you've been a strong advocate for protection and conservation of the environment, promoting best practices and innovative solutions for the management of our resources. Uh, you've worked tirelessly fostering collaboration and partnership among the boards, multiple boards that you've served on, the engineering team of LSSE, um, attorney Nicholas, um, oh, sorry, Ramel Nicholas, um, and the ta township officials and their staff. Uh, we are now proud to present you with a proclamation and, um, come on up, Don, proclamation and um, a gift from the board and the um, solicitor's office and the engineering team. I served with Dawn for coming up on 20 years. And um, what comes to mind with him is our deceased senior partner used to say, as he was involved with municipal government for many years, is that the highest compliment he could pay is somebody that was a true public servant, somebody not in it for the politics. And uh, my experience with Dawn has been just that. So it's been an honor to serve under you, and uh, I wish you the best. Thank you very much. Well, I, I just want to say you've been an inspiration to to all of us, and I, we appreciate it. Mike, you want to do your proclamation there? Resolution of proclamation. A proclamation of the Cecil Township Municipal Authority, County of Washington, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, recognizing the contributions and community service of Donald V. Genuso. Whereas Mr. Genuso was appointed to the board of the Cecil Township Municipal Authority in January of 1986 and served on the board for 37 years. Whereas during his time served on the board, Mr. Genuso acted as chairman from January 2023 until December 2020, and again from January 22nd, 2022 until December 22nd, or December 2022. He also served as secretary treasurer, assistant secretary treasurer, and vice chairman of the board. Whereas in recognition of outstanding community service to the residents of Cecil Township, 
Mr. Genuso was reappointed to the board eight times. Whereas during his tenure, Mr. Genuso served the Cecil Township community with the highest level of dedication, exemplified outstanding character and wisdom in carrying out his duties as a board member. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the board of the Cecil Township Municipal Authority wishes to recognize Donald V. Genuso for his tireless efforts in his honorable service to the residents of Cecil Township. His public service was greatly appreciated. I just want to thank everybody very much. It's very nice. I wasn't expecting any of this, and uh, it's very much appreciated. Thank you. And Joan, thank you for giving your husband up to us for all of those years and your family. And um, wish you all the best, all the luck, and the best golf scores that you've had to date. All right? <laughs> Okay, resuming, um, let's hear the engineer's report. Mr. Brett. Uh, yes, a uh, quick update on the Lawrence project. The um, uh, line work contractor, uh, he's working on punch list items. Uh, we put that in tabular form now. As complaints come in, uh, we add it to the list and we need to do a walkthrough with him yet. Um, and then a walkthrough with the township on a couple manholes, things like that. So. Um, they are getting the list down uh, to a few items, which is good. Uh, the treatment plan itself, uh, work completed this month, uh, included um, installation of the bar screen and stop gates, construction of the SBR decanters, HVAC unit, natural gas service, uh, caustic storage tank installation in the control building, uh, UV control system mounting, roof flashing for the control building. Uh, we're continuing for the installation of the aeration diffuser system and interior process mechanical and installation of the UV system. Um, contractor anticipates startup to be November of 2024. Um, they will be submitting uh, the official uh, time extension request based on the equipment delays, uh, et cetera. Uh, they are continuing uh, coordination with West Penn Power and their pay estimate, number 12, is included uh, for 364-00759, and we do recommend payment of that. Um, Pen Penvest requisition, number 13, in the amount of uh, 412,103.17 uh, was also prepared for uh, your consideration. That's all we have. Okay. So do I hear a motion for contract number 21-STP1, rebid Village of Lawrence sewage treatment plant <clears throat> for payment number 12 in the amount of $364,007.59. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. <clears throat> Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Barnes. Aye. Mrs. Rogers. Aye. Mr. Roach. Aye. Mrs. Barney. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Do I hear a motion to approve the Penvest payment requisition number 13 in the amount of $412,103.17? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Roll call vote. Mrs. Barnes? Aye. Mrs. Rogers? Aye. Mr. Roach? Aye. Mrs. Barney? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Okay, thank you. Mr. Nicholas, the solicitor's report, please. Yes, uh, only one item for public comment. I just wanted to let everyone know that as regards the pending CHJA litigation, you may remember from our previous report that <clears throat> Houston Borough had not responded to our discovery and had not attended the deposition. We were able to get a uh, sanction order from the judge on that, and uh, that will significantly limit them moving forward and our discoveries continuing. Uh, at next meeting, there'll probably be a more uh, robust report on where we are through the discovery process. And that's all I have for public comment. Okay, very good, thank you. All right, Ms. Jorick, the business manager's report. All right, um, this month's packets included the financial reports for April 2024. Are there any questions? 
All right. Um, our office is scheduled to move on Thursday, July 18th. We have decided to go with South Hills Movers. I have Comcast and Bullseye scheduled for July 17th to transfer our internet and phone to the new office. I also have our IT scheduled for the same day to move our computers and other equipment. Our office will be shut down for a little while during this time. Um, I was gonna put a message on our website letting our customers know. Um, I also had our billing clerk put an insert in with the bills for this, month's, um, for this month informing them the customers when and where we are moving. And I'm also in the process of letting all the vendors know about our address change. Right. Um, our auditor is finishing up with the 2023 audit. He will have it completed by the end of June. Um, depending on his schedule for July, he will be attending or will be sending someone from his office to address the board of the findings. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Zrencheck, authority manager's report, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, basically, tonight it will be a uh, verbal report. Uh, I was out all day today taking care of a, a couple issues with uh, two of our pump stations. Um, old business, just to keep everybody in the loop. Um, we have applied for the permit renewals for Miller's Run, Teodori, and Cherry Brook. No change. I'm still waiting to hear back from the DEP. Uh, Silver Creek Development has addressed all of their uh, technical outstanding comments. We did meet with them uh, back on May 8th to review the sanitary plans. Uh, they had a request for the type of piping. They are to submit that, and then uh, that would be something Kevin and I will review once they submit uh, what their request is. Um, Traditions of America, I am still working with them to resolve the uh, maintenance bond issue. Um, so there's no change with that. Uh, Gerber collision, uh, everything was met. A comment issue or letter was issued on the 23rd of April. Uh, we've still not heard back from them. LNS Wastewater had asked us about the uh, possibility of taking over the collection system and treatment plant known as the Monaco plan. We sent a letter asking for additional information. We have not received a response. Flow metering equipment that was uh, ordered, they sent me an email saying that it is on its way. It's just been delayed for uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, we're waiting on a couple of pieces, so they will send it all together. Miller's Run Pump Station, we did have a, um, the contractor come out today. The bypass system was installed that would allow us to run the pumps in case the VFD would go down. Uh, everything was put together today. It was uh, tested. Everything works well. So now if we do have a VFD fail, we can run the pumps in hand or we can go ahead and go in bypass mode where the, uh, the transducer will take over and run the pump. So now we do have backup there. Um, the agreement for the water line extension was sent over to PA American and they called me back. There was an issue. Somehow they were not allowed to offer a um, plan where it was half down, half on completion. So we had two off options. We could either have them cancel the check, reissue the agreement, do a third, a third, or a third, or just pay the balance. Uh, let's just pay the balance instead of going through all that um, and holding it up any longer. So that's all taken care of. Um, annual generator maintenance, they had sent me over the quotes for the... Um, hoses and the batteries that will need replaced at some point. I just haven't had a chance to review, so I will provide that next month. Uh, that's something we can budget for. Uh, Miller's Run Pump Station, number two pump is out for repairs, as well as number two pump at Cherry Brook. So both of those pumps are out. As soon as they come back, we'll have them reinstalled. Mayview Road, uh, they're dividing that property into two parcels to build a pickle flaw facility. Um, their engineer has been in contact with me. He wants to take a look at the um, Act 537. And so we're going to work with him on that. And he is currently working on what needs to do with the subdivision because 
Uh, according to our regulations, they are not allowed to run a lateral across another piece of property, but it has been done in the past and there's uh, certain restrictions that have to be done. It, is, it has nothing to do with the authority. It's between the two property owners, so they have to do a permanent easement, so they're working on that and I will keep everybody updated. Um, both the, the F the 2023 F-350 and 2014 were out for um, inspection. Both of them passed. Nothing extra was needed. Uh, I'm waiting to get the F-350 back to the dealer for the recall. They're still waiting for the part, and I'm waiting for it to come in. Under new business, last month I reported we were having an issue with the uh, disinfection system at Miller's Run. It was giving us erratic readings on the display. I talked to tech support from Trojan and basically it is not the control board, it is actually the UV sensor. Unfortunately, this is not a cheap part, this part's about $3,400, uh, it's, it's kind of a proprietary thing, so um, I did place the order for it, but that's what the issue is there, so we uh, will get that taken care of. We've been having some issues with the controls over at the Maple Ridge pump station. Starting last Wednesday, it's been calling out erratically for uh, high water alarms and different things. So I uh, called out all weekend, I worked with the manufacturer to try to correct, but today what we found out is it appears that um, the control panel is about 14 years old now or, or older. It's probably past its life. Um, but we did see that um, some of the things going on there is on the dialer, the way things were programmed, um, when it recognizes an alarm, three seconds and it dials out. It doesn't give it a chance to correct itself. Uh, the backup float, uh, the timer was set to 10 seconds. It kicks two pumps on, it'll never pump the wet well down because after 10 seconds it shuts back off. So we corrected a lot of things today, um, so hopefully, that corrects the issue that's going on with that. Healthcare renewal is due in August. Um, we had talked about trying to get another quote from MEIT just to compare uh, apples and oranges. So I sent that over to everyone. Our premium through our current broker is six thousand seven hundred or six thousand seventy four dollars and twenty four cents. And basically, that is for the Highmark Blue. That is the only plan that can be optioned. Um, with MEIT, we actually have different options. They can offer both UPMC plan and Highmark to the employees. Not everybody has to take it. So if you have one person that wants UPMC, they can take UPMC, and the other three could take Highmark. So it gives some flexibility. Um, basically, what it's showing me here is their top of the line plan, which is the Highmark, um, Highmark PPO 10, Blue 10, it's the highest plan. If everybody would take it, we would be 2% lower than what we're playing for a cheaper plan with our current. If they would take the UPMC, it's a 7% savings. And on the current plan that we have right now, the P Performance Blue, if the employees were taking it, it is a 12% savings. Uh, basically, our premiums would be 67,000. Uh, with MEIT, it's 59. So there is some savings. And according to um, Tammy from MEIT, with this renewal, it can be even greater than the 12% the on that. So it's just something to consider um, you know, we can save some money and offer our employees greater flexibility if they go to Washington Hospital, you know, because I know that that was turned over to UPMC, right. and I was told that at some point in time they may stop taking it, but it gives us some flexibility. Um, so it's just something to think about. Um, I'm going to talk to her tomorrow just to see what's going on to make sure what whatever's, you know, that it's a good plan, but I think this might be the way to go because we can save some money. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, um, phone system upgrades. I did send everybody over the quote from, um, what is it? Advent. Advent, I'm sorry about that, I can't remember. And we got another quote from Full Service Network. Um, it looks like Full Service Network is about $20 cheaper a month than, um, 
Advent, and Advent also with what they do with theirs is we have a, a reoccurring equipment rental fee, so it's about sixteen, seventeen dollars a month. Whereas the equip the equipment and whatever service is included with full service network. There's no additional charges. This is a full voiceover IP system um, that we would be able to get rid of the, the regular phone line. Currently, we pay about $318 a month for the regular phone line, so you'd be basically cutting this a little over half as far as savings by going with um, full service network, staying in house full. And uh, I talked to Jack before the meeting. That's who we currently have here at Cecil Township. They have full service for their phone provider. So, you know, it's another way to save a little bit of money, and now's the time to do it while we're doing the, uh, the phone system upgrades. Are there any risk to emergency calls um, or any lines that we may have at, 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 you know, our pump stations or whatever that this, could be interrupted without a POTS line? No, this, this one is just for the office space. Okay. So basically, at some point in time, what we will do with the pump stations is we will go away and go with the, the cloud-based, you know, with a cellular service mm -hmm. that we can there again save because we're paying in some spots as much as $89 a month for a line when you're looking at $400 for the whole year for cellular service. So you're saving $300 per station per site. So it's something to look at there as well as we upgrade all of those. Okay, good. And then one of the last items is I did uh, mention about um, cellular service. We were having issues with a couple of the phones. One, the battery supposedly wasn't holding a charge, and the other one was having issues with the operating system. I had to jump through hoops with Verizon to get this looked at. Um, we got it rectified, but just the, the lack of service, I figured it can't hurt to look at quotes from other places. Uh, T-Mobile came out, and I provided everybody with that um, quote. You're looking at um, $97 a month compared to the $127 a month for Verizon, but we also pay an accounting fee with or account fee with Verizon that we have to pay every month that wouldn't be there with T-Mobile. T-Mobile also offered to provide me with a, a cell phone. <coughs> to use to see to make sure the service is good before we would commit to you know making any change uh, we also pay for phone protection uh, as I came to find out the phones that we have they're not top of the line smartphones they're not they're just basic so the guys can get calls and make whatever the phones are only worth two hundred dollars we've been paying you know for service and protection on phones that it's not worth and you know t-mobile you have to take their word you know at face value but they said if something would happen to a phone they're willing to work with us give us a credit whatever so it may be cheaper than paying for something that you know we never use so um it's just something else to consider um but i wanted to provide that to everybody so they can see you know what we have going on and i will entertain any questions i like the opportunity for you to test it out throughout the whole you know, Cecil Township, um, because, you know, there, there are definitely bad spots with any carrier. So just to see if that service, I mean, that's a unique opportunity for you to be able to do that. So I would say do that. And then I almost missed one item. Um, I did send everybody out. Uh, Mr. Tischer uh, re approached us about roadway name consideration for the uh, Klinger Road pump station. Um, that was property that his family donated to the treatment plant to, or the, the authority to build the pump station there. So what he was asking is if there's some way that we can put um, Tisher Way or something on that road and rename it. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to do a little bit more research, but I wanted to make the board aware of it. I don't foresee an issue because it's so far back down off of the uh, beaten path that you know putting that there it shouldn't change anything you know as far as is that considered a private road or is yes, it part it's, of it's, the state or, or no it's township? considered it's considered a part it's a private road okay so i'm sure that there's things named that way i just have to look a little bit more research but i wanted to he sent an email so i wanted to make sure that i presented that and forwarded it on to the board for consideration yeah I, I think that's a very nice idea i just wasn't sure i talked with um ramel about that briefly today i wasn't sure whether that was in our 
um, ability to do so. And, and what, I, sorry. what I had mentioned was I, I think that uh, for a variety of reasons, ranging from public safety, knowledge on the part of police, to uh, townships uh, overall prerogative, that if the uh, authority found that to be appropriate and after Mike does his due diligence or whatever, I would think that that would be a township uh, issue. And I think that my recommendation would be to ultimately uh, refer to the township as to whether or not they would want to approve that. Uh, that would be my opinion. That's all. The, uh, Don Tissue Jr. Mm -hmm came to me first and asked me if that was a possibility. And it, that's the reason why you, and I think I've called, I called you, Mike, in advance mm -hmm. uh, to let you know that he was reaching out. Uh, Mr. Tissue was, he was very active in a township. He, he was very, very active, Don. And uh, he did donate that property too. And I know that uh, Eileen Tissue, she's still living. And she was the one that sold the property that is right behind it's Seven Clinger Road, I think. What is the people that are the resident that built that new home? It's on nine everything? Clinger Road. It's nine yes. Clinger Road, and his mailbox is along the road. So that's the reason why Don Jr. was reaching out to me, and he said, he said "Is there an outside chance?" I says, "I think your chances are to start with Mike first, and the board here, and then." Uh, I'm just hoping that the township doesn't give him a hard time. So it just seems like uh, it seems like everything takes three, four, five months to get anything through the BOS. So um, he wanted to talk with his uh, siblings as to what they would want to name it, which I think it'd be a great <coughs> idea for them to put a name on that private road. I agree. I think it's nice. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I, I think do your due diligence with the township and bring it back for a motion from us if it's even needed. But I actually found the, the file in the filing. That's what I was looking for to kind of see if there was a file somewhere on when we acquired the property just to see what the, the plot plan and different things like that to see what the ingress, egress, all of that is to see, you know, what's all involved there. So I was able to locate that and I will work on that and keep everybody in the loop. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for Mike? <coughs> any questions for him? All right. Do we have any correspondence? No. All right. Um, do I hear a motion to approve the expenses and transfer of funds for payroll and <clears throat> invoices? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Barnes? Aye. Mrs. Rogers? Aye. Mr. Roach? Aye. Mrs. Barney? Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. All right, no comments from the floor. <clears throat> I don't believe we need an executive session this no. month. Yay. So do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Roll call. Aye, aye, aye. Mrs. Barnes? Aye. Mrs. Rogers? Mr. Roach? Aye. Mrs. Barney? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Motion passed. Meeting adjourned.